We're tuned in to Kana's Corner here on 91.8 The Fan, and I have a very special guest with me. And that guest is uber awesome. And that guest is Takahata, who, if you don't know, is Ghost Nappa. He used to be Nappa, but then he died. So uh, I was ashamed, but he, he came back to life. And he's back better than ever! <laughs> oh, good times. That, that has to be probably one of the, in, in my personal opinion, one of the funniest characters. But you're also involved in the writing in Dragon Ball Abridge, from what I know. So that must, you know, attribute to everybody kind of putting their heads together, huh? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it was, it's a team, and the best part about the team is we all balance each other out. Like, we will, we all come up with jokes, and sometimes the majority of them are horrible, and so we veto each other all the time. <laughs> um, as, a, as a team, like, I mean, I can cite examples of how we were writing, and hi. <laughs> I can, um, the writing process has been, you know, it's a lot of fun because, for example, well, the mahogany joke in episode three. We were struggling with this scene, and... I was I was in the chat. Kaiser was trying to figure it out. He was going through all the clips. And I was like, well, he does have a desk, though. It's made of mahogany. Mahogany. <laughs> Lanny, all of a sudden, mahogany. Thus, the mahogany joke was born. I mean, that's a... And, you know, Kaiser, he... In episode 10, he came up with a squeaky toy joke as an example. The one where um, uh, Goku's just being squeezed and he's making a squeaky toy sound. Which, I actually got to play that episode in front of a giant audience, and they, that, that joke was the most popular. That slayed the entire room. So. That's so great. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, sort of this fan project has stemmed so much, you know, popularity. Is it kind of shocking sometimes? Yeah, it's, um, I'm not going to lie. I was not expecting this. When we hit 20,000 subscribers, I'm like, okay, we're just going to get, you know, maybe about 1,000 episode now. Nah. Nah, we didn't. <laughs> we were getting a lot. It was, it was stunning. Like by episode eight, we had like seventy thousand, and we're like, "What the hell?" We only got eight <laughs> episodes, comparatively to some people who had like twenty episodes of their of their parody series out, and they were sitting there hovering around ten thou. And um, now we we I know I think being Dragon Ball Z helped attribute to it, but I don't know I. Just, I think LK said it best with like, you know, we, we try, we try, we, we pump out episodes a lot slower than most people, but I guess uh, nothing against anyone else's series, but just with all the voicing and the, with the multiple writers, we try and, you know, write a genuine, gen, a pretty genuine series. It doesn't get too silly, but I don't know, it, it keeps within a certain constraint. If that, if that makes any sense at all. No, I can understand. Um, sort of the you know, consistency. Yeah, that's, I think that's the best way we try. Uh, well, we try to keep it very consistent with uh, like, that's why we sometimes we sometimes have created plot holes and sometimes we fixed plot holes like we never actually said that go that um that piccolo knew that the sands are coming that's why that ending outro for episode six was that he found out about the Saiyans showing up very nice and we oh yeah we, we forgot to mention that he knew that so we had to figure out a way that's what we did. We wrote it in. So it all worked out in the end. It was more hilarious that way. And now, from what I know, talking to Moscow X and then, you know, reading your little Wikipedia page, you are sort of the instigator of the group. So to speak, yes. Um, me and Kaiser originally in a chat. Uh, what we did was we were just in a chat one night, like one in the morning. I think, and I asked him, if you could actually, because he mentioned Lupin wasn't his first choice of a, a bridge series to a bridge. He actually abridges Lupin. It's up on YouTube. It's amazing if anyone hasn't seen it. Just saying. It's really well done. Kaiser's just an amazing voice actor and writer. And um, especially an editor, too. Um, it, we were just in a chat, and I asked him, so what would the series be? Well, I really like Dragon Ball Z. And I'm like, why don't you do it? He's like, well, they... You know, Lanny, Mosco, and Vegeta are doing the movies. I don't want to interfere. And I'm just like, ask them. Is he actually, I can't. Yes, you can. Just ask them. They like you. And they won't be offended. Well, I, I, I'm like, do it. Well, <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it, Kaiser. <laughs> and he eventually, actually, we, um, 
he talked to Masako the one day, the morning, and Masako's like, Goku, yeah! He, he's always going gung-ho for Goku. So, uh, and then we approached Lanny next that night, and he was a bit hesitant at the thought because he didn't want to, because they already had some issue with some people doing a Dragon Ball bridge at the same time when they started at the movies. He was a bit hesitant, but we just sat down and we talked about it. And by the end of the night, we had a script for episode one done. It just so happened that we managed to write together so well. That's pretty so amazing we, that you were able to pump it out in a single night. Yeah, yeah. I think we only had to make minor tweaks, like some minor tweaks. But literally, go Snappa, because w- w- the first night was figured out. Because when we were doing casting, actually, uh, I had, I think I was only going to, the original casting, I was only Gadget Roby, and I, that went to Kaiser in the end, and I, Nappa wasn't taken. Like, hey, can I be Nappa? Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Fools. <laughs> uh, no, it, and it, it just, and that since then, I'm like, I'm actually, the cast list has changed a lot now. Um, like, we actually got Anfish, TAS, who does JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Abridged, which is funnier than Team Four Star. I'm saying that right now. You should go check that out. That's really good. He plays Captain Ginyu. Uh, he's portraying Hercule as well as Dodoria and Saza, Cooler's henchman. Um, we got LK now as Frieza, which is pretty interesting because that means the, the final fight of this season is two British guys fighting in an American production. Will there be tea and trumpets? Uh, no, no, there will not. They're not that British. Aww. But they're modest and incredibly talented. That is true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I'm curious because Napa, you know, everybody knew that Napa was going to die. Spoiler, spoiler. But was mm-hmm. there, was there like, oh, crap, he's such a popular character. We need to bring him back. Or was it just for the joke to bring him back? It was mm, both. We just as planned for that. Like, Light, Yama, Light Yagami would be proud. Um, we knew he, when we were writing him initially, we knew he'd be popular. Um, so we planned to have him come back as a ghost. He was just going to, and that's why episode nine was called the setup when he died. And episode 10, where he comes back to life, the punchline. Because in the end, Ghost Snappa returning was the punchline of the entire first season. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard to an episode. I'll be honest. That was probably which, one. Of- which, which, which episode? The one where he where he comes back at the very end after you think he's gone. I think me and my friends sort of despaired about that, and then he came back, and we were just cracking up. It it it, it was great because we have these three parts, and people are like, "Where's Napa? No Napa!" Everyone, everyone's crying because these three episodes, these th- the three part episode, no mention Napa till the end. And Kaiser didn't even put my name in the credits, so then people wouldn't know. And he actually um he turned off comments for the first two days, so no one could spoil it. Because he didn't want to spoil the punchline for everybody. Oh, very good idea. Oh, yes. We, we just just planned that quite well, because Na- Ghost Nappa was came up with, I think, in the first couple sessions of writing. So, I think the first one of all time, too. So, yeah. Well, very neat. We're going to take a very short break here on 91.8 The Fan, so enjoy some Michi in the meantime, but we'll be right back to the station where we play everything you want to hear and nothing you don't. Ever wonder what's going on in the anime world? Check out 918 The Fan every weekday for the newest iStock. We'll fill you in on everything you need to know in three minutes or less, only on 918TheFan.com. And we're back to Kana's Corner, and with me in the corner today is Takahata, who has been... We've been just chilling, talking about voice actors today. It's been very chill. Mm-hmm. But we yes, were, we wanted to ask you about your voice acting dreams, because you do have a demo on YouTube, which I think I've watched twice now. Oh, thank you. What did you think? I thought it was very good, because it's uh, it's funny, and it catches your interest, which is exactly what I, th- I believe you need uh, to for your demo to you know be like oh wow let's get let's cast this guy. Well, thank you very much. Um, actually, uh, weird oddly enough, a lot of the dialogue was written um by uh, Kathy Wesselock and myself. Kathy Wesselock is the voice of Nier from Death Note and Shampoo from Ranma. Oh wow! As she uh, 
Yeah, she, I, I, she, I've taken a lot of one-on-one lessons with her. I took her at a workshop. She's just, she's such a mom. She's so wonderful and understanding. She's just a, a, a wonderful person. And if you live in the Vancouver area, definitely got to check her workshops out. She's really good. Um, uh, sorry, where, where, were you, where were you going with that before I cut you off? <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. But I'm actually sort of interested. I didn't know you took any vocal lessons at all. <gasps> Um, I took the original uh, workshop, which which was ten, eight hours, pretty intensive, uh, working with a bunch of people. Then I, you know, I, I took, a, I went with, well, and then I asked her if I could do one-on-one lessons with her, and she said yes. So she fit me into her schedule, and I've taken about six one-on-one lessons with her, and it's been really good. It's gone over the demo reel mostly, as you saw, and she went over voices, picked out which ones I needed to work on. Which, oddly enough, it's my regular speaking voice. Like I can go scratchy, gruff. Like I can do all the, I can go there, but the thing is, I, I need to work more on my my natural speaking voice, and I've been working on it a lot more, and I mean I can sound in certain ways, and continue sounding that way, but, you know I just I gotta work on it more. And you can you, always improve. I I need to improve. Everyone needs to improve. So. No, I, I I completely agree. You're it's always sort of a growth experience. You know, you just have to keep trekking. <laughs> And yeah. do you think you you've got anything that you're sort of doing? Are you submitting your demo tapes out and hoping and praying? Oh well, the thing is, my demo tape isn't a professional demo tape. It is an amateur one, which was um, edited by Kaiser, and Kaiser is about as close to a pro as you can get without it actually being technically a pro for mixing. Um, I haven't forwarded it to anyone really uh, in particular. I think I sent it to Gary Chalk to have him have a listen, but I don't think he actually checked it out. But what happened with uh, my demo tape was it got forwarded along to a company called Anime Midstream um, in St. Louis. And uh, one of my contacts there, Kat Thompson, who's one of the directors for the project, contacted me. And they actually wanted me to do a voice. And so I actually achieved a professional role in uh, the licensed series Zetai Mutiki Rainjin Ro. I think I said that right. I play on episode seven of their second DVD release. I play the sake sake monster. Well, congratulations on that. What, what exactly <laughs> is the sake sake monster, though? <clears throat> sake 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 sake. That that that's what it sounds like. Is it is it just monster monster of the week sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, kinda. But it's a really it's a really charming show. I'll be honest. I actually got to watch a couple episodes of it. It's really it really is charming, and it's fifty one episodes long, so it's a pretty decent length, and it, it's entertaining. Hey, and I voice a guy. Come on. <laughs> is is it already out yet? Let's... No, they're working on the second DVD right now. I actually had to ask for permission to uh, mention it right here. But yeah, but yeah, it's anime midstream. Uh, Zetai Mutaki Raijin O, and it's coming out soon, so check it out. Well, after the interview, I will have to make you spell that so I can look that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a mouthful. Do you think you'll be able to sort of extend your reach by doing these sort of s- smaller roles? Well, the thing is, it's a credit, and that's 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 a, that's a big thing. Don't you know? I would love to so much i mean if you work on something for so long you want to see go go somewhere i mean it's, it's a hobby at this point but it's a hobby that's bearing fruit i mean i you know with going to con going to conventions now as a guest and you know getting getting a and getting a pro gig it's just it's if two years ago you told me this was going to happen i would be like lol what no you know I, honestly despite all that i would not be anywhere without my friends i'll be honest straight up like the rest of the team Kaiser and Echo you know for you know bringing me along on the DBZ bridge trained Lanny for just being uh, in general awesome a great guy to work with you know a great friend little Karibo in Mossico little Karibo just being insanely modest you know and just an insanely nice guy and like bringing me on to his show to voice a couple of characters was just it's a uh, because he's because about two and a half years ago, I was a massive fan of his. And I still am a massive fan of his, but now I get to be in his show, It's, and it means the world to me. And I owe him so much for it. Masako X for just... Being that... He's so nice and polite 
and kind and giving. And God damn it, I wish I could be like them. Oh, I sent some bromance and, and, going on. Oh, yeah, and there's Antfish on the team. He's a bro. Same with Gongxing Ba. You know, Gongxing Ba keeps tells me when I'm acting like an idiot, <laughs> carrying on about something I shouldn't. Antfish is there just to be chill. He's a great guy. You know, Megami33, she's part of the team. She's also really great. White Ash as well, just a kind, giving person. You know, all these people. And, and of course, Crows. Crows is one of the nicest freaking guys ever. Can I get a Crows from everybody? Crows! Oh, mother fudging Crows. <laughs> <laughs> no, he certainly he's... helped uh, the 918 The Fan team a few times. <laughs> oh, yeah. Crows? Yes, Crows. Crows is, just, Crows is just great. Crows is... I was nervous meeting him at first because I didn't know if he, if he was like he acts online, which is... <laughs> a bit of a dick but I met him in person he's like one of the nicest guys he's so giving it's, we were lucky it's... we got to meet him in person first <laughs> oh nice oh Crows is just you know Crows is just giving you know what and honestly he deserves more props than he allows himself but you guys Especially worked for what? so hard and you have such a you know fan base to show for it that you know all of you have acquired just due to your talents I mean it's it's certainly nice that you guys are a team and friends and you support each other actually when we went to Yumicon the first time we got to guest as a team first time we ever met in person all of I us. heard about that in your podcast oh yeah I mean I oh I kicked open like everyone was there I was the last one to show up and I was so depressed about that but uh, I actually got to ride in the car with Brad Swale and that was kind of funny. Me and Brad Swale waiting for our car. We're like, crap. I'm riding with Brad Swale. This is weird. <laughs> weird enough, actually, because we took the exact same flights. He was um, waiting in the Seattle airport, and he was, like, right in front of me in the line. I'm like, is that Brad Swale? Is that, is that Brad? Should I say something? That'd be weird. I don't know. I'll wait till I get there. <laughs> he's, also, he's hi, Brad nice Swale. I'm also guesting you a con. Ah! <laughs> He, he's such a nice guy too, though, so I'm sure he wasn't bothered by it. I think they, they screwed up his bag, so he looked a little bit miffed, so I was going to keep my distance. <laughs> I just didn't know how to approach him. I'll be honest, one of the few times in my life I was really, really shy. I just, and, uh, you know, going to the con, Yuma Con, you know, just meeting everyone, driving up the car, and all uh, Megami, Masako, Kaiser, and Lanny are all waiting there arm in arm. And then uh, the, the, I tell the, tell the guy, the, the driver, to slow down the car, so they slow down, and I kick open the door, and I charge right into their arms. That must have been oh. a Kodak moment. Our... It was a Hollywood moment! <laughs> oh. it, was, it, was just, it was just great the rest of the weekend, just meeting everyone in person and chilling out with the nostalgic critic, angry Joe and Linkara, and everyone else on the team. It's just, it was just, it was bizarre. I'm going to say that, right, because, I mean, we at the at the Maid Cafe, we got to play the, the game from Inglorious Bastards where we each write something in, on, a, on a card and we pass it to the left and we have to guess what it is. So Team Four Star and LK and the Nostalgia Critic and his crew all played this game at a table together. And how was that? Like, Did, were you guys, like, it was, linked? Link, Linkara won first because he guessed he was God in three guesses. In my, in my fictitious, eh... Uh, Am I a man or woman? Uh, am I a shapeshifter? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I God? And you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys are actually going to see each other at a bunch of other conventions in 2010, correct? Yes. Um, we are going um, to Anime Evolution. It is a big one. Anime Evolution in Vancouver, which is my hometown con. Uh, the whole team's guesting, as well as HPI2K, which will be his first convention he's ever guested, and he's a great guy. I'm glad he's coming out. I'm going to be so frantic at that con, because that's going to be all my online friends, all my... Oh, they're all my friends now. All my friends, we're going to be one bloody building. <laughs> From I'm across the internet, my hometown. <laughs> oh, that would be pretty pretty wicked. I'm I'm going to secure a con I will here see in a couple there. months. Yes. I should be cosplaying. I am a big cosplayer. I love cosplaying. I should be cosplaying as Stein from Soul Eater, one of my favorite characters on the oh, show, next great. to Shinigami. So, 
We will make sure to take to... many pictures of you. <laughs> <laughs> if you can sign by me, if 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 the numbers increase like I'm expect like they're expecting them to, it's gonna have like what eighteen thou. Yeah, I think so it's somewhere around there because last year I think it was sixteen thousand five hundred eighty something. It, it jumped. It jumped off like three thousand one year. That's pretty extreme, but it's becoming a really big con really quickly. Oh yeah, it, it is, and props to them because they're they're doing a good con. I just I really wish they could get like LK or some other like you know some of the more sorry the more internet based guests out there because they tend to only go for voice actors uh, and Japanese voices. Voice actors. Well, they get they get like Kappa Yamaguchi. They got Kappa Yamaguchi and the guy who played and the original guy who played Speed Racer. So I mean I can't complain too much about guests, but yeah. <laughs> Do you have and any? Who knows? We might be. Oops, sorry. Uh, who know? Uh, who knows what other conventions we're going to? There's, there's some possibly in the works, but there's nothing confirmed yet. So it, it's preferable that we keep it like you know, a little bit you know, not official until we get official word. Um, hopefully we can come back to Yumacon. That's our hope. We would love to if they can get back in contact with us. We would love to come back again because it, it was just a blast. You guys talk about that one a lot. That just must have been such a shining moment for everybody. First time we ever met, and it was just great. You know, it's it's weird where you get flown out, and all you have to really do is sign autographs, and you don't even know why you're doing it. <laughs> it's so silly. It's just, it's just, it's it, what what it is is meeting people who know and love what you do, and not even knowing who they are. That is the weirdest thing, I think. And you know it's it's a good feeling though that you you're affecting someone's life and you're entertaining someone, because it's it's one thing to you know just watch stuff and you know play games and stuff, but it's another thing to actually you know, take part and make something that other people can enjoy. It's a it's a great feeling at the end of the day, and it's uh, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I do. I, know, hope to, I, I do hope to see you at SoccerCon though, because we'll have a few of the team up there, and uh, we will be bugging a lot of people. <laughs> well, the, at the parody, um, the parody panel, which is um, going to be on Saturday at like one o'clock, I kind of told the person who's running it, I'm crashing it. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> yeah. We'll see. Thank you for Thanks. giving us a heads up. We'll make sure to film that. <laughs> I'm just going to be, hello there, yes, what's going on here? Oh, these papers yours, not anymore. You just throw hello over there. their table. <laughs> I am internet famous. <laughs> oh, God. No, it's, it's going to be cool going to some Kirk. I've got a lot of friends going there this year. And are you cosplaying any other costumes, or is it just that one from Soul Eater? Uh, probably just the one from Soul Eater. I do actually, I did Mori. If anyone wants to Kirk on watch, I did Mori Nozuka. From uh, or on high school host and I had a six-year-old honey on my shoulders on Saturday. Now I get to see pictures of this. It was adorable. Oh my god, it was win. I, I we couldn't move. Literally, we're trying to walk from uh, the uh, the from the dealer's room, dealer's entrance, to the uh, main lobby. It took us an hour to walk there. We were oh, stopping wow. every couple steps for pictures for a couple minutes. Yeah, it was kind of insane, and it, it was just it was it, they were taking it for the kid. The kid. The kid, it was much like the show. Yeah, Mori and Honey on their on by their own are great, but combined, are powerful. Well, I'm sure, and it kind of helps if you have sort of a little little kid on your back the whole time. <laughs> and I think he had the bunny plushie too. And and his sister was there. His his sister and her dad was their dad was there too. Yeah, and did so. you just find him at the convention, or were you guys like... Yeah, I went to the Oron photo shoot, and um, and I was just kind of sitting around awkwardly, and then they showed up at the end, everyone's like, bah! Everyone's awing over, over him, and she actually, she's Kyoya, she approached me with her brother, can, can we get pictures of him on your shoulders? I'm like, yes, you can. And after the we did the photo shoot, and afterwards I hovered around, like, is it okay if I, like, carry him around a bit, see how, 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 how people react? The dad was like, sure, no problem. Oh, <laughs> man, rest of the day, he could barely... And the cutest thing ever. Well, there's two cute things with it. The, cute, the first cutest thing was he turns to his dad like you know, half an hour through pictures. He's like, this is more fun than Xbox. Oh. And his dad went, wow, I never thought I'd hear that. And then I think the most horrible thing, it was a really sad, adorable thing too. 
was it the end of the like it was coming around five o'clock and he needed to go to dinner and then head home. He actually started tearing up because he didn't want to go and he, he gave me a giant hug. He's like, "Thank you so much. I had so much fun." I'm like, I'm like, I'm actually trying to hold my tears. I'm like, this is so cute. <laughs> Oh my I god, cried, man. So adorable. I cried. I cried manly tears. <laughs> and it was and and his sister was just great. She was really great with pictures too. And their dad was just a champ. <laughs> Walking around holding the bag, taking pictures too. He's just like, wow, I wasn't expecting this reaction. That is so adorable. Like I I hope you, you find another moment like that at uh, one of your upcoming conventions because I, I I've I've heard a lot of funny things, but I don't think anything can top that one. <laughs> oh, uh, it it sucks because it was my first time really trying to cosplay because I did a Toby before and it was kind of fail. People liked it though because it was Toby, but um, that one is just, it's hard to top when you your, your picture taken about a thousand times. Hard to. <laughs> Unless you plan that stuff with a lot of costumes, it's about the only other way you can beat that. Because that was just that just ha- I just happened to really luck out with that, and it was just such a, a really great experience. And um, my next cosplay was Cezela Portoglans from Bleach, one of the Espada, with pink hair and all. Gosh, the best part of that was because the 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 um, place where the convention was at, Anime Evolution, was near a tourist spot, and there was these tourists. They turned to me, the one the one like like twelve, thirteen year old kid turned and said, "Are you a boy or a girl?" I'm like, I'm a guy. <laughs> yeah, she got startled by it. I'm like, apparently I was wearing that costume pretty well. Oh, <laughs> that's, like, that's a blow to the ego. <laughs> hey, no, screw it. Hey, if, if people couldn't tell whether it was a guy or a girl, my cosplay was win. Like, because like all animu, you can never really tell. <laughs> very, very true. Do you have anything, you know, you want our listeners to know about, such as projects or anything else coming up? Ooh, watch Masako X's Camp for the abridged series on YouTube. It's really great. It's it's only got one episode up, but the second episode's coming out too soon. Definitely gotta check it out. Subscribe to it. It's it's Masako's original, like one 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 man series, and he's doing a great job with it. Um, aside from that, uh, oh, watch Cheese Man Joe's. It's my really good friend. Cheese Man Joe's Gwyn Saga abridged, and Guy for the Bio Boosted abridged. And again, Ant Fish's JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I cannot tell you enough how you should watch that. It is we all we all all most of Team Four Star cameos as little bit characters, and it's really really good. And now you can find the Team Four Star series on you guys' website, right? Yes. Or actually, we got our YouTube account back, so you can just go to our YouTube account. Get the whole shebang up there now. I, I know how that feels. We actually, nine, 91.8 The Fan got their YouTube band about November, and we finally just got it back. It's just... Oh, that blows. That we're blows. We're slowly, slowly trying to get all of our videos back up, but we do I stock a new show, and it's we're up to episode, like, 260 right now, and in November we were at 200, so... Yeah, I have, I have one quick question. Who was the person on before me, like, the, the last guest? Uh, you, the last guest was yesterday, and that was Claudia Black. And who's the next guest? Uh, the next guest for Monday, I don't think I have a... Com- I can't actually announce it yet. We announced them on Sunday. Oh. I'm just stating that I, I came on behind Claudia Black. That's kind of funny. Yes. I'm nowhere near as popular as Claudia Black. <laughs> I get yay. We, we, I'll, I'll try and tell you early as soon as I get a confirmation who comes on on Monday so you can brag about that. <laughs> I just want to say, yeah, so I'm in between these two people. Yeah, how the heck did that happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you very much for having me, and I hope I hope you guys can get the rest of the team. Oh, we'd, we'd love to, and before we do let you go, I was wondering if you'd participate in a 91.8 The Fan tradition. What's that? We were wondering if you could do a bump for us. Well, what does that mean? That means that you would say either in your voice or in a character's voice. My my team is bugging me to see if I can get you to say it in Napa's voice. But uh, basically say, my name is, I do this, and you're tuned into 91.8 The Fan. All right, here we go. Okay. Hi there. My name's Napa, and you're tuning into 98.1 The Fan. It's Which 90... is odd, the name of Napa. It's ninety-one point eight. It's ninety-one point eight. <laughs> that sounds stupid. You're stupid. I'm just kidding. Ninety-one eight. 
the fact. Thank you very much. Uh, no that was that was hilarious. <laughs> there you go. Hopefully, the screw up worked better in the long run. <laughs> it, it probably did. We'll play it as as a promo. But if, if you ever want to offer one in your in your normal speaking voice, you're free to. <laughs> I can do that right now too. Okay. Ninety one eight the fan, right? Yes, ninety one point eight the fan. Ninety one point eight the fan. Hi there, I'm Takahata 101, and you're listening to 98.1 The Fan. And it is so perfect! You did 98.1 The Fan again. <laughs> 91, son of a bitch, okay. <laughs> okay. Hi there, I'm Takahata 101, and you're listening to 98.1 The Fan. 91.8? Is it 98 point, is it, it's, oh it's, my gosh. It's 91.8. If it makes you feel better, it stands for internet radio. 9 is the I, 18 is the Nine, R. 1.8. Radio, yeah. <laughs> okay, I wrote it down. Here we go. Hi there, I'm Takahata 101, and you're listening to 91.8 The Fan. Yes! Victory! <laughs> Finally. <laughs> we do. Finally! Re- the Rock has come back! <laughs> we do really appreciate it, and that's why we do it live on air for all the goof ups and the bloopers. There you go. Yeah, we, we try and make uh, you guys look silly. Oh, well, if you wanted me to look silly, I'd be more of a thespian. I don't even know what you're trying to say. Oh, I'm just doing stupid shit now. Oh, that's okay. We don't mind stupid stuff. <laughs> there you go. Is there anything else you want to tell everybody listening out there? Oh, they all heard that I, my screw-ups? Yes, they did. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm talented. Don't listen. <laughs> Uh, anything else I want to say? Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thanks for thinking I'm important enough. <laughs> hope and to thank- see you all. In season, hope to see you all in season two of Dragon Ball Z abridged and season three of Yu-Gi-Oh abridged. And thank you for joining the show today. We really appreciate it. It was awesome talking to no. you. No problem. Thank you very much for having me. And we're going to go straight back to the music, so stay tuned to 91.8 The Fan. Everything you want to hear and nothing you don't. <laughs> 